Hey, Garrett Morris. Garrett Morris. It's, it, you know, really fun to talk to an OG gangster from the first, the beginning of SNL. I mean, that's really where it all started. That's yeah. what we're all trying to copy. And from our point of view, like, you, when he, as soon as he popped up, he, he came to play. Oh, he had great. great fun energy from the first second just yeah. something about him um, he was into it it's like bottled up like he hasn't talked yeah. to, i mean he had, probably doesn't done an interview for a while and also two guys that are super interested in it and we have common ground so he uh he was a chatterbox he great. he really was there and knows all about those first five years which are seminal in snl of course and he gets into grievances and people he maybe didn't <laughs> like and yeah. drug use and <laughs> anger and all. So it's very, very interesting. I love interview. it when people don't really hold back like that. He doesn't give a shit. He's no, and then like, he hey, fires like up a person. joint halfway through. Well, I, I'm not sure if it's halfway through, but make sure you're listening when it happens. You're going to love this You'll hear one. this. <laughs> <laughs> That's trying to get it going. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of old stories, mm -hmm. the stuff you would expect. And it's just great to hear from him. Yeah. Because you don't hear from him a lot. Just, and uh, just funny. Grew up just watching funny. him. So. I would, yeah, I enjoyed this one. Yeah, funny. I enjoy all of them. Garrett Morris. My name is Garrett Morris. Hello. Garrett, you, uh, my last name is Spade. But you've already screwed it up by having an ex-convict on your show, okay? <laughs> Whoa, let's get down to yeah. it. Yeah. Did you serve time? That's all. It's my only question. I, I, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I actually spent a year and a half at what is known as Great Meadows Correctional Facilities. I was a teacher. Oh, I was at the Tim Meadows Correctional Facility. Uh, now, Garrett, <laughs> you Tim were a Meadows. teacher in there? Where? You too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. Go Timmy. ahead, Garrett. Let's hear about that. Anyway, I, I, in like 1968, 69, I was a school teacher. I taught at PS 71 over on the east side. And I also oh. taught, uh, they had a program for teaching convicts. And I was a part of it. They gave us a, um, a um, Volkswagen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, folks, mm -hmm. uh, you guys say it's really Volkswagen. Yeah, okay? everyone's say saying it wrong. Yeah. Okay? Anyway, and I didn't know I was driving along the drug drug. Um, Thing and I used to get called call all, all the time by the cops. Okay, wait, wait, you were running <laughs> drugs in the Volkswagen yeah, and then you got pulled over, drugs. and you were also teaching kids <laughs> and, and running drugs. I don't get I was teaching those murderers drama. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, yes, you have quite a resume. <laughs> yeah. I looked yeah. it up. Oh my god, it's. Yes. It's it's vast. <laughs> it's you know, like, oh, Garrett, I have to tell Garrett something just so we are, we have some common ground here. Uh, Garrett, I was in Arizona, you know, running the harsh streets of Scottsdale. And when yeah. I was about, you know, 18, 19, I was trying to flirt with this girl leaving a uh, SAE party at Arizona yeah. State. And I got pulled over immediately and they cuffed me and said, you have to go to jail. I don't think Dana, I didn't tell you this. Uh, so I go, I, heard I go to jail and I say, Hey, any reason for the jail? You know, well, uh, I, I didn't even ask, uh, cause I just felt I'm pretty guilty about a lot of things. And they said, yeah, you've gotten too many tickets, speeding tickets, and we have a warrant for your arrest. And I realized they didn't. So a couple hours in, I go, can I see those? And they showed me copies and it was my brother's signature <laughs> saying he was me because he got pulled over so much. He would have had to go into jail. So he goes, no, no, I don't have my license. I'm David. And so then he signed them all and then he still didn't pay him. And then I spent the night in the clink and I had to have another comedian come bail me out. Oh, wow. And that's, you, Chevy you Chase still, bailed you out? <laughs> do you sorry, still speak with my brother? I still speak with my brother, unfortunately, but he know I'm such a pussy. I, I would never really give him any trouble about it. And I didn't. Is he out, Is he out of jail? No, I was the one out. He never went. I had to do the time for him. I, I had three older brothers that would stuff pant, uh, stolen items down my pants because I was nine and they were 11, 12, 13, and they were all juvenile delinquents. We fought, we smoked, we stole, but they would stuff them down my pants because I looked so little and so innocent and I'd yeah. walk yeah. out. But yeah, I, I stole a lot of stuff when I was nine. I'm just putting it out there right now. I would 
I stole 10 I yo-yos three, in one day. I had, I had three weekends in the tank myself. Okay. Uh -huh. See, we're all not uh, soft. We're all from the fucking streets. Let's, let's get right, that out of the right, way. Yeah. Right. Got it. You know, yeah. So I, I, I'm not innocent at all. <laughs> but one time, it was because a traffic cop broke the law and used a Slim Jim right to go into my car yeah. and he looked under the mat in the front seat and found a bag of marijuana, which is illegal cop. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I go to the impound to get my car, and I see about four or five cops standing around my car. I'm not stupid. So I <laughs> wait, right? And they wait. And we for about 30 minutes. I said, okay, let's go get my car. So I go to the car, and I don't go in. And they come and they say, uh, open this back door. I say, no, I'm not opening oh, it. Oh, my God. They mm. open it, right? And then I was doing my karate thing, right? So I had a gi in the back. Yeah. And they said, open that bag. I said, no, sir. They open it, and they had put the grass in the bag. Oh, oh my God. Right? The old right. frame. And yeah, they handcuffed me. But anyway, I go, I go downtown, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm being booked. And mm -hmm. sure enough, there was a cop there who was him. He says to me, see John Yanusti. Now, way back there, John Yanusti was a very progressive Italian a lawyer who was hooked mm -hmm. up, right? He mm -hmm. would help you out. Sure enough, I went over there. John, you know, to figure out what it was about. He said, this see me Monday. I come in Monday. John whispered something in the judge's ear. And the judge says, Garrett Morris. I raised my hand. He said, get out of here. I don't want to see you in here. Again. All right. Was, yeah. <laughs> he whispered you were framed, right? That's crazy. Well, the, the the lawyer probably told him how the cop got the grave. Yeah, no body cams back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. How you been doing, man? How you been doing? <laughs> hey, I'm doing good. good. Me, yeah. me and Dana have been uh, having fun. Look at my hair; looks good today. You know what? I, know I what filmed happened. something this weekend. Usually, it's, you know, a little shaky. Are you and Dana? Are you and Dana an item? Oh, an item? <laughs> an item? <laughs> I just Are you like breaking a story? Listen, Garrett, what happens on Fly on the Wall stays on Fly on the Wall. Am I canceled no. now? That's I can't do yeah. that anymore. We'll I'm, that I'm leading the cancel. Yeah, Dana and I are old buddies, and uh, we sort of emerge in the same person over time. I must say, you do look like you came from the same mama. You do. Yeah. Same tribe. Irish, Irish, Scottish, Norwegian. Yeah. What's your tribe? German? Really? And I'm Irish, Scottish, Dutch, Norwegian. And, yeah. Well, I'm Pan Cambodian, Nigerian, West Africa. And by the way, Ancestry.com <laughs> says I have a little bit of Finnish in me. Can oh, you believe that? That's interesting. It's, it's down deep. Bucks. Yeah. I can't my see. Skin it. Cries when my skin cries. sunny. Birthday. By the way, tomorrow's <laughs> my birthday. <laughs> tomorrow's your birthday. I read that your birthday's coming up. Is it the first? Is that tomorrow, what it is? Tomorrow, till February 1st, yes. Okay, we'll delete this because this is going to be airing in 2027. Uh, uh, no, we don't. We don't know. When. <laughs> no, we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> All right, what's your secret? I have to ask. What are you? What are you drinking? Is this that... here is green tea. Okay, that's it. Yeah. That's the actually, secret. actually, glucose tea is helps to reduce your glucose um, count. So blood sugar stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I have a I'm type two diabetes. Your energy. Uh, doesn't match your birth certificate it's huge i mean you're just like on fire you're just energetic i i can't tell you on here man this is recorded by cops okay <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you just, yeah they're always monitoring this I'll yes. <laughs> <laughs> i will say garrett you are um you have sort of a uh very bright uh light and energy about you and a fun thing about you and i see why in comedy you do well because you always bring it you're very vocal you got a strong voice you, you just have a fun vibe and, and i think positive. that's so yeah people, positive people want to work with you so when it comes to comedy this is what i say i'm an actor who was in a comedy show many many years ago and i have been suffering ever since <laughs> <laughs> now why have you been suffering so, so are we because everywhere i go people want me to be funny and as my right. ex-wife would tell you well, she used to tell me all the time, in word, you ain't funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fill in the blanks. Well, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think you're funny. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have a funny vibe about them. Like, 
people say the, the uh, when I uh, date girls, I go, what do you look for? And I go, I like a, a girl that's funny, but I don't mean she needs to be Robin Williams. Some girls just have like a charm and fun thing about them. And that's funny to me. And it's a lightness and fun. They don't have to be like, you know, Henny Youngman, yada da. So take I like that. Life, I go, please. I'll take care of that part. Take my life. Exactly, exactly. Yes. But yes. by the way, Dana, Garrett has worked with Pryor and all these huge, huge stars, which I look over and I can't believe how cool that is. I got to work with Richard Pryor, but I want to hear your story first. <laughs> oh, don't one up him yet. I have a, a nice Richard story. I have a great Richard Pryor story, okay? I want to hear yours. It's got to be better. When both Richard yeah. and I were cult fiends, <laughs> <laughs> that's the title I of the Dana's podcast. I bet Dana's story doesn't start like that. <laughs> you can't show, Go ahead. Right? Yeah. But Richard brought his own group because he had heard that I was Lauren. Nobody had heard about about me except people on the East Coast. So Richard brought his own writers. Nobody knew. I got this job, which does say in 75 was a pretty good job for a black guy to get. (laughs) They're thinking I'm Lauren, Lauren, uh, help me. Lauren Michaels. Lauren Michaels. Lauren (laughs) Michaels inward. Can I say mm-hmm. one thing? No, like you were his main man? You, yeah, can, yeah. you can say anything you want, as far as no, I'm concerned. I basically yeah. thought that was going on. That like Richard had gotten that uh, Lord had gotten some guys who knew. Well, at the time I got to Saturday Night Live, I'd already been in New York for like 17 years. I had written two plays. Two plays, yeah, yeah I read that. I've yeah. been at like 15 off Broadway and Broadway shows. Uh, and so I paid my dues, right? And yeah. they didn't know that. So when Richard came, he brought his own group and he didn't use me. And I was really hurt by that because until this day, Richard is my favorite monologuist of all time, right? Yeah. And at that time, yeah, I was really sure. very hurt because I wanted to work with him. So he mm. did the show, didn't use me. But later on, when I went to California, he was doing a movie called Critical Condition. And mm-hmm. I got a call from my agent saying, Richard Pryor wants you to be in the show, be in the movie. And he never oh, said anything. I assume that was his way of saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry or something like that. I yeah. like you. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was that, very my, sweet, that's, sensitive. Well, you know, a lot yeah. of hosts do that. I mean, a lot of hosts still bring in writers just because they get scared. Like maybe Paul Mooney was with uh, Richard. I don't know right. who he was with. Back. He was a force of nature. Paul Mooney, I used to do stand up with him in the late 70s. And I would go, why is this guy in this little club? I mean, he was so charismatic and so good looking and so funny. It was like just everything. I love Paul Mooney. I'm yeah. sure he was behind Richard doing what he did because he was Richard's writer. He was, but yeah. even to this day, I see because much of what Richard did was Paul Mooney. Right. Mm-hmm. And, well, uh, the thing, okay. Go ahead. I, I, what do you think? You know, when you the idea of a monologist, you know, I I think of that more voice orientated. But I think that with Richard, from what when I first saw him on the Ed Sullivan show, he mimed for two minutes a guy reaching under his underarm <laughs> to see if he had bo, and it was like just a silent movie, you know. So Richard had that capacity to paint a picture yeah. instantly, and he could do just a straight monologue. So and I don't he know. Tells, I, he could tell stories, like yeah, and play all the characters. About, yeah, he could talk. When you talk about Mudbone, you wouldn't be laughing for like two or three minutes mm-hmm. till he got to the punchline. Yeah, but you were so engaged in Mudbone till this time, till this day again. How did you say the word? I said monologues. You said say it again. A monologist. Anyway, I, I sometimes I have trouble with English. I, I, I knew. Uh, I, I, I want to tell my Richard Pryor little story Go ahead. here. Tell me. Tell yeah, me. Kind of. So I'm working at the Holiday Inn as a waiter. Yeah. And it was near the Circle Star Theater up near San Francisco. Richard's headlining there. So Richard's in the restaurant. So I got to go serve Richard. And I was really nervous. So I, I brought him a, a, a Denver omelet. Okay. Uh-huh. And then later on, I came back and I... I uh, took the plate and he looked up at me and said, quote, whoever made that omelet can suck my dick. (laughs) (laughs) And I never knew if it was a positive or negative review. Twelve years later, I'm in a movie with Richard Pryor, which Uh I'll tell you about. We're at lunch and I just wanted to know what he meant that day, but I didn't want to bring it up. He probably, probably wouldn't remember. So I look at him. I take a bite of my cheeseburger and I said, this cheese, uh, 
this uh, this cheeseburger is really, really, really uh, good. And he goes, wow. Well, you must want to suck somebody's dick. No, I can't. I got the headline. Got, <laughs> you got it wrong. He, got it wrong. Hey, he but, uses that. He uses that suck dick metaphor a lot. Yes, what he. Well, oh, okay. So it wasn't just me. Yeah. One of okay, the funniest jokes I ever heard was when he said, "This bitch was so fine, I want to suck her daddy's dick." <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say I just had a root canal and a crown put in, and I'm kind of spaced out. So the end of the joke went like this, you know. Okay, we'll do it again. Um, he goes, um, um, I like. Wait a minute, I'm so I'm so stoned from the dentist. The, the punchline, the, the punchline. Punch you do it, Gary. Oh, I said. No, I, I can't. I really can't remember. I'm I think you said up. this cheeseburger can suck my dick. Did you no, say no, it was yeah, it was a reverse that I I got the the information by setting a trap, you know? Oh, and he, and oh, I, 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 I will get to it before this podcast is over, but I am so high right now. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just oh, like, well, I'm, I'm very what, bro, spacey. What kind of, what kind of marijuana? Marijuana? No, it was Yo. dental stuff. Oh, okay, okay. But if I, if I sure. do smoke marijuana, sure, Dana. my sure. brand is, yeah, sure. my brand is sledgehammer. That's my brand of cannabis. Oh, thank yeah. God. Your brand of cannabis is what? Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. From the Peter Gabriel collection? I made it up. <laughs> yeah, I like that name. It sounds cool. <laughs> Shovel well, to the face. Show, I will be smoking a joint, okay? Hey, Garrett, I have a question you are- for you. You can smoke a joint right now while I ask you if you want. Yeah. Um, now, Garrett, when you... Okay, can- bring me a joint. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, so when you come on SNL, it must be like the Dirty Dozen. So you guys all get together... You yes. don't. You probably don't know each other, right? Right. And then you are thrown together, and you're sort of like, okay, let's see what works, what doesn't work. And you, this oh, you were a writer. Day. You were a writer at the beginning, right? Yes, I was. Yes. Okay, so you were not. I don't think you're on camera till later. I think that was a, a decision that was made later. Correct. I actually was on camera the first show. Oh only shit! Because of this. Let me try. Can I? Yeah. You're in the middle yeah. of a story. I don't want to cut you off. No way. It's about you. Here's what about happened. You. I was a playwright, right? So I brought Lauren my play. <laughs> he read it and liked it because there's a couple of funny things in it. He hired me. I didn't know that just because you write a play that's about two hours doesn't <laughs> mean you can write 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Yeah, a little tiny sketch. Really? Yeah, for sure. It took me about four or five months to realize I couldn't do it and, and I was feeling really pissed off myself till finally I realized I had an idea because in my play, the Black Panther group that I have is called the Young Lions makes a joke about how yeah. when they're collecting money at fundraising, they want to raise a lot of money when they have white, guilty white liberals in the audience. Aha, right. I love them. Okay. Yeah. Right, so I have to tell that idea I'm going to call his name to Schiller. Who, do you remember oh, Tom? Tom Schiller. Oh, Tommy yeah. Schiller. Yeah. Right. Schiller goes over, goes over to um, the studio and tells it to another guy whose name I will not call. That guy hmm. then writes it down as his idea. Oh, whoa. Wait a minute. Come, right. When I come over, it's written down and he's not even giving me credit for even contributing. Right. So anyway. Anyway, what happened? Now, I don't know. Am I tell, I'll tell you the whole story. Anyway, yeah, going. yeah, anyway, what happened was it became a thing called the White Guilt Relief Fund. Yes, I remember <laughs> the sketch. Right. Yeah. And I don't know I, when I started off to help me because I'm, I'm 85. I may be all No, I'm tracking you the story. You would ask white people for donations out of guilt and make them an honorary Negro. You'd send them a plaque. Or right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah. that, was, that was the only thing that I did that I thought was worthwhile. And this guy who at that time was a second in command to Ann Beats, right? Mm. Now, here's what happened was Michael I was so Tom. mad. I was so angry sure. about that. Yeah. Took me a couple of weeks to stew over that. And I was going to make a serious mistake. I was mm. going to come in this particular day 
and let him know what for. And even if it meant physically confronting him, I was going to do that. Although I knew he was a wrestling champ. <laughs> now you <laughs> Oh, I think I know who it is. Wrestling champ from Harvard. I, I, knew I think I know who it yeah. is. I, 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 didn't care. I didn't care. I said, if I get a couple of licks in, yeah. after he whips my ass, he's still going to remember me, right? Yeah. So I get off to the elevator, and somebody there says, Garrett, Lorne wants to see you in the green room. <laughs> I go to the green room, and sure enough, John and Gilda and Jane had told Lorne Michaels, look, you've got, got Garrett bringing in black actors. He's one himself. And here's a movie he's done. They were looking at Cooley High. Yes. Oh, Cooley High. Right. So Lauren looked at Cooley High. He auditioned me with Gilda. And I was totally counterpunching because Gilda is like, Gilda was, uh, 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 to this day, I'm real. How she, how she improvised. You didn't even know she's doing yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. And I counterpunched throughout that. It was, our setup was, I was a taxi driver driving from JFK with her as my my uh, passenger, and I was cheating the hell out of her all the way, right? And so anyway, that's how I became a member of the group. So I was there the first the first time we did it from the beginning, but I didn't start off that way, no. Wow. But how about you turned your anger and you had to switch gears and... I, I look, I, I look, I'm a Buddhist, so I don't believe in necessarily in a personal God, but somebody really was in the works who stopped that because I was going to make a serious, serious mistake. Listen, Franken's, uh, Franken's got go some ground to, game too. Did I, you have go-to moves, Garrett? I mean, how, as a fighter, would you do the kind of, hey, well, let's be friends and then headbutt? Or would you work the body? <laughs> or what would be your kind of go-to moves? I would have gone to the soul effectors first because that would have brought him oh. down. Then I would have kicked him in the chin. Boom. He's going to get up mad as hell and do some kind of a hold and break my neck. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. okay. Shorter, look, if you're short, like I am and don't weigh much, you got to go for yeah. what you need. Yeah. You got to get away. You, you hit fast and then you move, but be scrappy. There was no way I could have won, won, no won that fight. Yeah. I no, knew. I know the dude and he would, he's very tough when he gets in the ground game. Oh, I yeah, would say, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you, listen, look, I got mad at him too, but I didn't, I, I didn't think of smart, fighting him decision hey before we go on can i just do the richard Pryor joke we can cut it out but it really bugged me <laughs> it, no, we need it. We all need right it. i'm so sorry about the dentist but here it is i waited i'll set it up real fast when <laughs> gave rich Pryor a denver omelet at the holiday inn i brought got the, ta- uh, the plate up and he said whoever made that omelet can suck my dick 12 years later true story in a movie wanted to know what he meant by suck my dick was it positive or negative i'm having lunch with him I take a I take a bite of the cheeseburger. I look at Richard and I say, "Well, whoever made this cheeseburger can suck my dick." And Richard said, "You must love that cheeseburger. <laughs> That's how you do it." Boom. Dana, <laughs> I'm making Garrett happy. That's what I love. I never knew I would say "suck my dick" on this podcast. Now I've said it seven times. That's a mic drop. What no more. Reminds me, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. what do you yeah. have mm-hmm. if you have? A patina with a penis. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, a patinas. <laughs> no. That's a, yeah. You have a dictator, stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> Why do you have to have the stupid part? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stupid. Yeah, it's just, it's a pretty good joke. <laughs> no, because you didn't know what it was, stupid. Stupid. I like the stupid at the end. It was hilarious. That could have been a guy character. So, so you were f- part of that original lexicon. I mean, uh, who was your hangout friend of the cast? These are just basic SNL questions. So who yeah, did, who'd you gravitate who you, to? Was it Gilda or just everybody? Or did you have Gilda, people? You... Gilda, Jane, uh, and Chevy. Uh, mm-hmm. But I didn't do what I should have done. Because I should have also, after the show, after the show, at the first couple of years, it was you go downtown to this bar. I think uh, Willie. Oh, Willie, yeah. You have the party. Willie, yeah. yeah. That's equal to that golf game yeah. that people talk about, where you form alliances, right? So yeah. I didn't do that. So I really had a lot of people not liking me, thinking I was stuck up and all that. Well, yeah, country. why didn't you go? I'm one, Now I want to know. Because I, even to this day, am an introvert working against oh. that, all right? Okay. I've too. really gotten over it to a, lot, lot, a large extent. But also I had, at that time... Okay, do you want to really know the real truth? 
Go ahead. I yeah. have probably a couple of girls at home okay. waiting for some cocaine so we Here can we do what we're going to do. <laughs> so it was either the girls and the cocaine or having Lauren tell his story about how we've met. <laughs> I think it may. <laughs> like, well, listen, uh, that's a tough one, Dana, because his story sounds great, like all that fun stuff. But then you look back and you realize you've got such huge, talented, cool people that you get to. Because I was going to say, Garrett, did you have a, an official after party? It sounds like you didn't. But we had Dana was on and then I was on with him for a while. And we had they would walk around with a ticket. A secret, you know, during the show. Remember oh, this, yeah, Dana? A big and they'd one. hand you it and you put it in your wardrobe or something. And you go, here's where the party is. Don't tell anyone. And it was during the live show. So you go, okay. And then after the show, you'd go straight there. But they didn't want everyone to find out about it. And so we'd have a designated spot every Saturday. And we'd go there. Sort of the same thing. You just go there and get all fucked up with everybody. But you uh, see, I'm sure that the reason why that didn't happen to me is because at first, I set up not going in the first place. Right. So when that started happening, people probably said, well, you know, fuck him. You know, he doesn't. Well, well you had yeah, some they, responsibilities they that, to get But back I remember to. when I first got on SNL, Lauren was telling me about, you know, Chevy and Danny and everybody and Garrett. He said, <laughs> Garrett, the only Wait a minute, way to do get- that again. Do that again. <laughs> Chevy yeah. and Danny and, you know, and Eddie and all the people and Paul, you know. You could never get Garrett to the party unless you brought some cocaine and some hookers. <laughs> I go, Really? Right. I'm sure. Right. That, I'm sure that. <laughs> Listen. I'm sure they would have said that and they would have been correct. It's good bait. Well, the thing about it was coming in 86, you guys were badasses. Like to me, that original cast, you guys were, oh, it's a little, <laughs> oh, a little bit of a, okay, let's show. A little power flower. Let's show. Oh, you're going to blow your nose. Power fly. Yeah. A little yeah, go uh, ahead, bro. I'm sorry. A uh, gentleman joins us, um, <laughs> been on Saturday Night Live from, from the original cast, a um, young man named uh, Garrett Morris. Can we come in? But we thought of you guys as badass pirates. You would fight. There were drugs. You know, Chevy and, and Bill Murray would fight, and Belushi was like a badass. And then we got in, and people were having, like, Amstel lights. We'd have a Bud Light at the party with me and Phil and just yeah. look around. Yeah, we didn't we party felt, as hard. We, yeah. we didn't belong. Well, can I say something about John? Yeah. Mm-hmm. John... When he and I were both into the cocaine thing, yeah, he never really talked to me unless he needed cocaine. Mm-hmm. And then I get a knock on the door. Hey, buddy. Come in. <laughs> and I put my, you know, 10 fall down there. And you know what he would do? Do 10 of them. By the time he got to, I had none left. Uh, so he would just go in, get a straw in his nose, go down on the desk. You oh were about to God. snort the coke and he would snort all of it? Oh, my God. He would leave a little bit <laughs> at oh God. the end. A little bit at the end. God Oh, would. nice guy. <laughs> He's a brilliantly talented man, but boy, boy. What... I had mineral water and Nora Dunn would come in and just chug it. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm kidding. No, but... <laughs> What was it about, like, I tried cocaine, I've talked about it, I just, like, you're saying you're you're fighting being introverted, like, when I did cocaine, within 30 seconds, I was very sad, I I just, really, it made me very anxious and very paranoid, I only tried it twice, and I, one time I did some cocaine, drove to the comedy club, and I couldn't go in the club, because I knew they all hated me in there. (laughs) <laughs> and then I just drove back home. So how how did it, but I knew people that cocaine spoke to them, that eventually they had it in a little thing and they just sniff it all day. Yeah. Um, so what what did it do to you? I mean, did well, you- Okay, cocaine uh, did the opposite to me. It livened me up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, because you were an introvert, so it kind of opened you up a little But bit. then you need right. more cocaine, right? You're losing the high, you got to get more, yeah, right? That's, that's the trouble. That's the trouble because the thing- that first high, you never get it again, David. Uh, mm-hmm. You never get it again, David. Okay. Yeah. After that, you're striving to get that first high. So yeah. even if you're on for like 35 years, which I was. Uh, 35 you, years? Yeah. It's wow. different that you get, never get that again. Then you start smoking it, right? And you get that um, again. Some, some. But then smoking it, you're coming down. So you keep coming down. For, you never get that first high again. Okay. So doesn't well, make you stop chasing it. I was there. I did it for a while. Well, Lynn Bias is one first. Do you remember Lynn Bias? Yeah, oh yeah, what a mess. Yeah. When he when that happened to him, I started thinking, Gary, you're way older than this guy. You're way older. And you know, something's going, you know, you're lucky that this, that didn't happen to you. You know, Garrett, so, I was oh, in, I was oh, in it 
uh, during Len Bias. Len Bias, for the for the listeners, is a uh, basketball player that got recruited by the Celtics, I think. Yeah, and Celtics. I think he died yeah. after draft night or something from doing too much cocaine. Something yeah. I think before he played, and that was the first time I think I knew you could die from just doing straight cocaine. Like I hadn't excuse heard me, that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, he's, he's, he dropped his joint. Uh -oh. And his house is on fire. No, he's actually. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Oh, oh, is it okay to say that we think our friend Garrett Morris uh, is enjoying some fine Sativa. cannabis? Sativa, Sativa, Sativa. Oh, yeah. oh, so that's like, what does that do? It evens your energy out, or what? It's One's not just mellow. Just, Sativa mellow. is a kind of marijuana that lets you stay awake. Oh, it's yeah. up, upper. Okay, yeah, it's an upper. Uh, if you get a uh, hybrid, it's in between. If you get indica, you're going to go to sleep. So a lot of times when I'm working, I'll either do it Is that weird? out folking or with this. You know. Well, I worked with Scatman Carruthers once in Rockefeller really? Center. Yeah. I envy you, okay? Oh, I'm oh, I got this. I, I'm uh, Scatman. Angel from heaven, oh, sweetest guy. Oh, wow. And always was, he'd go in the bathroom and you'd hear him and he'd be smoking weed, you know? And uh, so one night, it was the one year, one year anniversary of John Lennon's uh, death. And my brother was visiting the show. It was a sitcom with Mickey Rooney, another crazy man. And Scatman gave us a joint. He rolled it in front of us and he had both ends were closed off. He did it without even looking, you know? And so then we tried it. And it was terrible. It was really weak. So the next break, I brought back some Colombian pot yeah. from Santa Cruz. No, you did Purple hair. I did. And the next day North in the elevator. Slope. Now, Scatman was from the 30s when it was illicit. He, in the elevator, people around, he says to me, quote, the music was good. Might I get a pound? <laughs> <laughs> of your weed? So after the show was over, my brother and I got a huge bag of pot, grocery bag of pot, drove it down to Van Nuys where Scatman... <coughs> <laughs> live brought him the pot played banjo kept in touch with him no his guitar yeah and ukulele still going strong and many the we'd, moocher we'd never met like a a character like scatman you know you see that man there he said he points to the janitor he goes that man's an artist that man is an artist. You know, he was just taking us all these different places. I like that. What a he did. He was in Blues Brothers, Dana, and that's the only reason I knew who he was because I was young and I saw, I think he was in Blues Brothers. He sang Minnie the Moocher. Is that what I'm thinking? Did you I, see Blues Brothers? I know Brothers? Aretha was in it, right? Yeah, Aretha he was, was in, in the, it, yeah. He was in The Shining. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was him With too? Jack Nicholson. You know what? I have never seen that. It's huh. scary. I love my man, but I hate um, scary uh, movies. Yeah, I hate scary movies. Yeah, so do I, dude. I'm with you. I can't well, you said it. that Jack brought in a suitcase of pot into London. Yeah, by pot you mean cocaine? Uh, no, this was cannabis. <laughs> and he goes, and they go, and Jack goes, I'm not going to sell it. It's just for my personal use. <laughs> and they let him through. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because so, he's a monster. Shoot, I uh, I have another thing. Did you have any favorite sketches back then, Garrett, when you were there that first year? Uh, the uh, Colossal uh, President. What was that? The Colossal President. Yeah, yeah there was this uh, thing at the 12 Mile Island or something like that, mm -hmm. where the uh, nuclear thing. Oh, Four Mile Island. Three Mile. Three Mile. Yeah. Three, mile. Yeah, three Mile. I know yeah. it was and, and this, 5K, uh, yeah. Everybody's big. Uh, and I, I'm the uh, wife of um, the president, and he's big and I'm big, you know. Um, another one that was my favorite, not for any other reason, but I really think about it as a win, which somebody didn't get the message. It was with um, uh, O.J. Simpson. Oh. Where uh -huh. he was a mandingo who goes around <laughs> raping, all, no. raping all the uh, black slaves, or female <laughs> slaves. And at the end... I'm supposed to kiss. We're supposed to kiss. I don't want to kiss him, David. David. In the sketch, assignment is, is to kiss. You know, what uh, I mean? like this to kiss him, and he backs away, as if I really want yeah, to. Yeah, you were just acting, right? Yeah, to oh, do it. Oh man! Another one is uh, something that Alice Swabell did. Uh, the um, 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 baseball um very, very good Chico, to me. Chico, Chico, uh, baseball Chico been Squilla. very, very good for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, Chico Esquilla is really um, Brando Murray's original concept. Mm -hmm. he oh, and, he's he funny. And, uh, his brother he's came funny. up with. Then uh, Alan enlarged on it, right? 
So we would do a piece like that all the time. And also, I can't uh, throw out um, something that uh, Chevy came up with for me, which is uh, hard of hearing. Yeah, which became yeah. kind of a, yeah. a runner. Every, everyone That's knows a great that. Runner, are you sure? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Zwei Bell's a big writer there. Yeah, he was good, right? You oh, I think him. he. I love him. I love Zwei Bell. I yeah. Him. Yeah, he's great. But Garrett, now when you did um, in the beginning, oh, first of all, now that that one, uh, I don't know when Pryor hosted or what year it was when they that sketch with Chevy. I think it must have been the first year. Wasn't Chevy only one year? Yep. Chevy, no, Chevy came in after a year and a half. Oh, no, oh, I, I thought, thought that was left. Billy. Chevy, uh, no, I'm sorry. No, no he, Chevy, he, Chevy was in after, you're right. He was in yeah. like a year, right. And then Bill yeah. Murray came in. Right. 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 And, and Chevy, Chevy blew up. What was that like when one cast member was like, wasn't he on the cover of Time or something? I mean, he just went pew. Was he on the cover of Time? I didn't know that. Uh, Or Newsweek. I mean, I know that Chevy just got so much I, I, I said heat. right on. He did with Fletch. Is that was the name of Fletch? Yeah, he did a lot of movies. Yeah. 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 I thought, however, he waited. He should have waited a little longer. Of course. I, I agree. Just like he wishes guy. he'd never left. He, he wishes he'd stayed at least five years. Right, just like the guy who was yeah. on that uh, cop show, uh, who later on did a uh, CSI. David Caruso. Yeah, he left too soon. You know that right. happens, and I get, I sort of get it. But Chevy was a tall, great-looking guy, and he's a, and he was really good in comedy. And then he was a movie star. Like I don't even know what that would be like, but to leave when you know it's the best show, it's the coolest show. Like you guys, I know Chevy blew up, but all you guys were huge. The Beatles. I mean, everyone well, yeah, on that like show. The, the Rebel. I mean, there just was nothing like it. I mean, I was in college, and when it when it came on, and I saw all you guys. You I mean, make it was me just... feel old, fellas. Okay. When hey, I, I was feel one, old all the time. You I mean, how old were you? When I this... was being born in the hospital, and it was on TV, and I was like, oh "This looks pretty god. funny." Oh my god! <laughs> no, I I'm... was born in 1988, but I <laughs> when, when I when I got into Saturday Night Live. I had mm -hmm. been in New York about 17 years, right? Yeah. And you were 38. And when I yeah. was asked to join a Saturday Night Live, uh, all those other, excuse me, motherfuckers had just got out of high school and college. Yeah. And I was about 10 years away from AARP. Oh. A -A okay. Right. You, didn't, you, you did not look older than anyone. You didn't stand out as like Phil Hartman, older. I think, was 38. I was 39, 39 years, old. Oh. I'm 39 years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Garrett, this uh, uh, Dana, I just want to ask him that, which I everyone might know this, but Chevy does. There's some sketches people remember, you know, and one of them is Chevy interviewing Richard Pryor when he was there for a job. Oh, well, and who well, and who wrote that? Huh? Who who wrote that one? I think Chevy and Richard together. Oh, cool. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's like. I mean, when you look back on what you guys did comedically, that's a classic. That's a classic. And yeah. then what you could what we call it now since what we can get away with now, you know, it's just very different at the time, even at the time it was incendiary, but now it would be now, like, we'd go to a that. test pattern. Right. It, it would just get canceled. I mean, Lauren, <laughs> did, he did at the right time. Cause in about 10 years, we got into what we're into now. Right. Which is where, which is a softening. Yeah. You, I mean, with all due respect to the brilliant cast that Saturday Night Live had always had, you can't really write for them the way they wrote for us uh, then. I mean, you know, and I, I hate that. I hate it's, that. It, that. It, it it's changed. It's a I real. Mean, it's a Rubik's cube. You got to really, you really have to cleverly get clever stuff in because you can't. It's almost like you're pulling from the same eight jokes that everyone's allowed to use now. Right. And that won't make people mad. But you guys, I think. The first five, I think you're on for five years that at least the standards and practices didn't even know what to say no to. They were like, this is so ridiculous. Yeah. Like they had to learn and go, well, wait, wait, we don't like that. We're getting a lot of complaints about that. We have to stop that. But it was like playing whack-a-mole because every week you think of a new way to offend people. And that was the greatest part of it. Well, no, no one cared initially. And then the show became a smash. At what point? I mean, two years in, you guys just blew up. But initially, right. probably right. they didn't. Had, no one's watching. We had a lot of yeah. people who, were, who were, we thought were progressive. Okay. Love, yeah. in my opinion, the true progressive. Yeah. Uh, without any sign of racism whatsoever. But I. So, thought, he's, like, so he's like me. I thought, <laughs> for instance, that Michael O'Donoghue, because of his past, 
would be the same way. Michael Donahue, with all due respect, was an absolute racist motherfucker. <laughs> you got to add motherfucker to that because it just completes <laughs> and all due the respect. thought. The very first show, there was a skit that was going to have a black doctor, right? Mm-hmm. Have a doctor, not a black doctor. And I wasn't in it at all. So I said, hey, Michael, why don't we have the doctor be black? You know what he tells me? Well, Gary, uh, the audience might be thrown by a black doctor. Now, this is 1975, right? Now, I'm from New yeah. Orleans, where from the time I was 12 years old, I was surrounded not only by hordes of black medical doctors, but black mm-hmm. PhDs as well. And I'm wondering how a guy who... Yeah name is associated with National Lampoon doesn't fucking know this. Did he not see Guess Who's Coming to Dinner with Cindy Poitier, which I saw in the theater at age eight and I, it infected me the rest of my life and I got to do a lot of benefits with Cedar, uh, Sidney Poitier and uh, yes. He's, a, a he's another real gentleman. Sorry, I'm still a little well, high. I'm slurring. But, well, yeah. that's tough because, yeah, you're light in the show. You say, hey, can I get thrown into a sketch? And he said, no, this one's not right for you. And it's like, oh, boy. You can't be a black doctor. What are you talking about? You know, mm-hmm. we're talking about Sidney Poitier. I remember being almost high. You walk by a person, just walk by, and you, <sighs> I'm on 72nd Street, and he's coming towards me. And I, for like a half a block away, I say, that's fucking Sidney Poitier. Right. Ooh, oh, and yeah. I just passed him and, <sighs> like that. And to this day, I remember that day. You know. Oh sure. yeah, he was oh. so eloquent. I remember oh. I did a bunch of benefits for Cedar Sinai, and he was always there. And then one time I got off stage, and I was walking to the audience. He stopped me, and I was able to do my yeah. And he, he gave me some praise, and I did my. I said they call me Mister Tibbs <laughs> from the, <laughs> and he laughed so hard. It was with Rod Steiger, I think, but. Yeah, for me, there were so many brilliant uh, movies in the 60s and 70s, and just a lot of my heroes were black. I mean, just Jimi Hendrix, my brother came in 1966, he came home. He was 13. He said, I just saw the best guitar player in the world. I said, what's his name? He goes, Jimi Hendrix. But we didn't, we weren't, we were kind of progressive in our own way back then because we just wanted to see Jimi. We didn't think, you know, and I went to the first integrated, a very, very well integrated high school with busing. In 1969, so. Talking about Jimi Hendrix, you know what he did? When he came yeah. back from England, where he'd already become famous, he got on the corner of 125th Street and 7th, 7th Avenue and played the guitar for like 18 hours or so. Mm-hmm. Just to introduce people to him. Oh, he, my, was, that... he was really something else, he was. No, uh, like Neil Young has said about him, no one's ever played the guitar like Jimi Hendrix. No, he... Did Jimi Hendrix was never, He did he die before SNL, or he's somebody they would have on He that? was one of those caught up in, with, yeah, he, you know. Yeah, yeah the, he died. He was like 27, young. right? 27? 27, yeah. 27 club. Um, you know, Janis Joplin, Janis around the Joplin same age. Too. Oh, um, man. Kurt Cobain. I hate him when, she, I hate him when that happened to Janis. I, I loved her ass, man. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, again, you know, there are there's just certain talents like Janice's singing and mm. there's a word I use a lot, supernatural. Well, shot, shot. I mean, that screaming, the intensity of it was just yeah. crazy. With all due respect, especially coming out of a white woman. OK, sure. When yeah. I had, Damn, yeah, bitch. she has such a talent. And then it, it almost like they burn out quickly because it's so much talent. And so that voice is so cool and everything. And you, you hope it's around forever, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's also just... just the accidental playing with fire, you know, Jim Morrison, once you start playing with opioids and mixing that stuff in, uh, you know, of course, you know, John Belushi, you know, it's, it wasn't intentional, uh, but it, you're playing with fire. It's, it's just, yeah. Matter of fact, that's another thing that started me to straighten up. Uh, yeah, John's death. Was yeah. John during when you were on SNL? When was it? I can't remember. He was 32. Well, like 83, so. I think, right? Oh, it was okay. after SNL when he, he died. Yeah, right? and the thing yeah. is, John and I didn't really hang. Mm-hmm. Only when he needed cocaine did he hang. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. Yes. So what? how did that affect you? Did that get you off cocaine, or you just started to slow down, or yeah, what I happened? I slowed down, and by the time I came here, uh, here I was. it's not something you could just stop. Uh, mm-hmm. But by 2005, uh, I went to AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and they do something that exasperates you, they will call your ass, okay? <laughs> and right. they will sponsor you over and over. And so to that, I really, uh, I've succeeded in getting rid of it, okay? Yeah. Much different with cigarettes, which I still am struggling with, but uh, I'm glad that it's 2005, it's been nice, that, uh, 2002, 22. Yeah, here we are. Off since that, what, 17 years, 16 yeah. years? Yeah. Well, the body has a remarkable healing apparatus once, once yeah. you give it a break, you know? So you're, did you have a lot of people who lived a long time in your family tree? <laughs> Matter of fact, my grandfather lived in 92. Okay. So, so you got some longevity. There, yeah. Uh, my grandmother got, I'm sure, got cancer when she was in her 50s. So uh -huh. she passed. My mother lived to 80, but uh, uh -huh. she didn't take care of herself. Okay. So there's a cut, you know, either I'm going to hook up my grandfather and, you know, stay for a minute. How do you deal with stress? Are you really Buddhist? Are you really Zen? Are you, re are you relaxed in your brain all the time, Gary? All the respect. I know you guys hear Buddhism and you think Zen. Zen is right. not, but it's, it's not, it's only one part of Buddhist. There are 300, right. over 300,000 Buddhists worldwide and two of them are like me. They chant which is not mm -hmm. the same thing as the Zen Buddhists, okay? okay. Right, so you chant. They, they meditate. Domne okay. arigatu, domne arigatu, domne arigatu, domne arigatu. No, it's nam myo herengi. Arigatu. Oh, shit, nam I fucked it up. Kyo, which well, let me hear it. Nam myo herengi kyo, nam myo herengi kyo, which no, means no, no, no. that you're What's it dedicated means? to the mystic law of cause and effect, which means you don't believe in a personal God, but you do regard the law as being in the place that most other religious place gone. It is the most sacred right. thing gone. Well, I, I did transcendental meditation, and my mon mantra is dumb, not I, a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm a TM uh, practitioner, too. Yeah, my, my mantra, Dominali, which I found out later was Native American for drop your shorts, we don't have much time. Are you telling people your mantra? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kidding. I'm just joking. I would never tell you my mantra. I like, yeah, no. don't tell them. My mantra is Garrett. <laughs> Garrett, uh, let's. <laughs> Garrett, after SNL, first of all, there's too many cool people there. You had you had uh, Danny Aykroyd, who we did. I did two movies with, three actually. Great guy. Uh, beautiful guy, yes. He was beautiful, dude. I seem like. Uh, did did you hang with anyone after the the following years of SNL? You stay in touch, or you just see him when you see him, kind of thing. So I saw him when I saw him. Um, when Jane was out here doing two rock, we used to talk on the phone. Oh, that's right. Jane was on a yeah. third, second rock from the sun, third rock from the sun, right? And now I had a quasi relationship with Lorraine. Because yeah, Lorraine. Her yeah. daughter, Hannah, who is very, very talented. Yes. Did yes. you see her in Hacks? Oh, Hacks. Yeah, 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 she yeah. She is a dynamite actor and yes. also a very fine comedian. She did my show. Mm. Uh, last year, yeah, Garrett. You uh, who was your head writer when you started? Was it Ann Beats? Ann Beats was yes, she yeah. was. Mm -hmm. See, they had a girl head writer back then, which is probably yeah, right. That was unusual. More rare than a black doctor. And that other writer. guy we talked, we <laughs> mentioned that was the uh, assistant head writer. Ah. Uh, I, yeah. I know who you're talking about. And, I'm ah. and look, I was very sorry about what happened to him because I think that. I'm not going to call their names. They right. should have backed him up when that thing happened. They should have backed him up and not let him go the way he did. Uh, it was a lot oh, of politics. I know what you're talking about. about. A lot of politics. What yeah. he did was not what he didn't have to leave because of that. So yeah, it, I tend to agree. It was a purge that had to happen, but it, it some people got swept up into it that yeah, maybe yeah, in a more reasonable been, time been, would have. He, yeah. He, yeah, he's not have been treated like that at all. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Jeez, I wonder if I'm yeah, canceled right now. Do you think we could be canceled? You're canceled from this because podcast? you agreed. We said, suck my dick. I said, Sydney Poitier, black man. Ah, First of all, he says, with all due respect to us. And then he says, with all due respect, motherfucker, to other people. So it really did. Lost I got a called little a bit white of... motherfucker from, <laughs> yeah. from Karen Morris. So I'm, I'm just happy the rest of the day. Like my day is a home run now because it no, was do with love. Kid? Do you have any kids? I've got two sons and they're You're in show business. You're mother every day. <laughs> oh Jesus! <geez. laughs> so motherfucker. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he got you on a technicality, Dana. <laughs> motherfucker is just a great word because of the yeah. rhythm of it. Motherfucker, yeah. you know. 
It's a great word. I mean, do- gosh darn it. That's not, it, doesn't it, get in it done. In my community, gentlemen, we. You say it better. He's a bad motherfucker, meaning you, mm-hmm. Dana, meaning a great guy. Yeah. Okay? I like that. I, I say of like, oh, Rachel Maddow, I say she's a bad bitch, right? <laughs> Rather than a motherfucker. Right. Yeah. She's a bad bitch. You, although I don't look at the news anymore because it depresses me. No, no, no. It's con- it's de- it's designed to get us all angry. When I was sides. looking with Rachel all the time, and what's the other lady, um, uh, Joy Reid? You know, Joy Reid, yeah. yeah. You know, uh-huh. Ari, Mel- Ari Melber, you know. Yeah. Brian, oh, my. Like, yeah. So, Brian my, Williams. It was my thing of, until, until the news just started bringing me down. Garrett, before I, uh, before I, uh, we let you go. Trust me you, out. Do you still sing? <laughs> Dana said you're a good singer. I used to sing high C's. Now I sing low C's. I sing the blues now. I don't sing, uh, you know. Uh, oh, you doing the Albert King or who are you singing? <laughs> Muddy Waters and stuff like Muddy that. Muddy Waters? Yeah. yeah. Isn't, um, My favorite blues singer is Muddy Waters. Oh, I loved Albert King blues Albert power. King was great. Albert King was great. That baby, that baby and its baby head, a baby bed all fussing up. He's got the blues. He got the good old fashioned country blues. Remember Albert? Wasn't he magic? And of course, Muddy Waters. I mean, you know, he's no, no, that's I, another guy. Just oh, so... no, Morgan, yes. <laughs> Lay it on us. Don't be shy. Yes. But you sang with the Harry Bentley, uh, Harry Belafonte singers. I, I was with him for like nine years as a, my first job in the yeah. business was as a singer arranger with, uh, yeah, that's so singers. amazing. The Belafonte Singers. <laughs> the Belafonte Singers. Yeah, as a 12 member group that he managed, right? He sang right. them periodically, but they used to sing without him. So we two. Who all- sang that thing? You put the lime in the coconut, you put a little. Yeah, right, right. right. That was Harry? Okay. That was, that was Harry Belafonte? Yeah. yeah. And then it became a commercial, too. Yeah. For some product. Day, 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 yo. They like come on, we wanna go home. They what about seven see, up is the that uncola. blues now? You can you can get laid with that. <laughs> hey, eighty five, that's all all day. Eighty five, still alive. Eighty six, no, you got you're cool voice. Eighty seven, you're in heaven. Eighty eight, don't be late. Eighty nine, won't you be mine? Ninety, <laughs> Jesus. holy heaven, Holly. <laughs> you can see. Was this your <laughs> SNL audition? That was a good spit. one. I know. I've had dinner with him. Uh, well, Garrett, thank you for coming on with us. It's been a delight. You're so much fun. I, Garrett, I just you're feel happy dude. you're hanging out with you for this hour. Thank you I'm, so much, fellas, for even thinking about this old guy. Yeah, you're a good dude. And it's, you know, we all got a job because of uh, you and the squad up there. Oh, my God. Oh my and God. Lauren and, and everyone. And I just so. want to say 100 episodes on Jamie Foxx. You were on the Martin <laughs> Show. Yeah, you, yeah, you're very talented men, okay? Thank you, Both bud. Extremely talented. And that's Thank how you. you got your fucking job. We do the best we can. You're terrific. You're tremendous. Excuse me. Many people are. Who's <laughs> better than Garen Moss? Nobody. Listen, many people are saying never better. Nobody's ever done it like him. Come on, let's get real, folks. No not joke. Not I'm not kidding around. Garrett Morris, here's the deal. Come on. We can do better. <laughs> we will do better. You got Trump says, and Biden at the end. I love your impression, by the way, I love your impression, man. I love uh, you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Can we hang out sometime? Can you oh, yeah. get my inf- I, You got my number. All right, Garrett. Miss you, bud. No, let me thank you guys for this. I appreciate it. Love we it. really I just really enjoyed this. I know I'm a little I'm a little fuzzy and my words aren't coming out as well as they normally do. But because of the dental work, but I got the prior joke out. I completed it. Yeah. And that made my day. It was a three parter. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to pack myself an ice, get a B12 shot and get a, get a crack we, a course light. We don't <laughs> want to end the show with the words suck my dick. OK, no, no. I, <laughs> what would be the substitution? Um. So um, instead of saying "suck my dick," yes, you kind of say, uh, "How about a hand job, dear?" I guess that's a little more benign. Maybe not so uh, dramatic. Oh, um, I, just- I got one. Good night, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs>
Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. Folks, we got another AMA to cap it off. This is a Ask Us Anything. Question is, do you have a favorite SNL monologue? One of my all-time favorites is the one where Susan Lucci... And the Emmys from 1990. Hey, everyone, mm-hmm. Emmy fight. Nealon wearing an Emmy around his neck, spade, using Emmy to eat corn on the cob. You oh, I was that. in yeah, that. Yeah, That was funny. Price says, thank you for the pod. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Dana, do you remember this one? Because I was just a newbie on that I one. know. I wasn't I wasn't in that one. I don't know what's going on. That was funny, though. How is Susan Dana Lucci? not in something? That's I was weird. probably changing into do Bush Senior. I had the bald caps going and, and you all need, that. You need that 12-minute chunk. Change. Yeah, I would just put the bald cap on early and just drop all the wigs on yeah. top. Anyway, um, one yeah. that stood out for me during my time, I don't know if you were there for it, was when Steve Martin. I was going to say fucking Steve, Steve Martin Steve Martin sings. sings a song, with, and it becomes a Broadway musical. Oh, yeah. where we, we run and dance the cast, all with Steve. The whole premise, he's done it so much at this point, hosting – He's not gonna I'm not going to phone it in tonight. I'm not going to. And I, that one really stood out for me. One of the biggest laughs is, yeah, he runs around and he goes, come on, guys. And he picks up cast members along the way. Yeah. And just, he goes, he's like the Pied Piper. Sing it, Chris. And Farley goes, I'm not going to get uh, super drunk tonight. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I won't have a drink till update is through. That's a promise to you, the viewer. Yeah. Till yeah. update soon. He goes, Got good pretty memory. good, Chris. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he let everyone sing. And uh, wow, I just thought of that at the same time as you. I like, think it monologues. was Robert Smuggles, but probably a lot of people joined in on it. But I, that stood out. Always was, comedians have great ones. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, as we mentioned, Kim Kardashian had a great one. Um, mm-hmm. when she was on. Not a comedian, but that's sometimes fun when people come out of nowhere and knock one out. Um, low expectations, and then she delivered. Uh, and so there's over the years. God, I can't pick one. I remember Emmy so fight many. was funny. Yeah. That was Susan Lucci was that was a great one. Yeah, and we've been a lot. You know, I like when they bring the cast into a, a monologue. Sometimes that's a trick, though. If they don't really know what to do, right. they stack them, or if they're too nervous, they. They want cast. Yeah, and there's a lot of Q and A from the audience. That's that's a great device. Oh, what about Britney point? Spears and her boobs are moving around? You remember that one? <laughs> I don't. She think said I a lot of people it. think I have fake boobs, but the truth is, and they start going like this in her shirt. They had like a uh, some sort of trick. Yeah, that. yeah. That got a big laugh. Mm-hmm. Oh, those so were many. the days, my friend. So th- thank you for that question, but there's just too many to pick from. I think. Yeah. But you, you, we mentioned you some picked good a good ones. one though, Susan Lucci. We came back with Steve Martin. Whoops. When Steve's on, we got to ask him. Sounds like Oz was better. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, David Rivera. I asked that question. And now I hate to say it, but bye-bye. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 